day one of switching to Manjaro, the first of a four-part series in this entire switch. In this video, I'm going over setting up and the initial configuration of Manjaro. Stay tuned. So what was I what was I thinking coming to Manjaro? I mean, wow, it sure has seemed like I've jumped through 10 different different dif distributions in the last couple of months, which it's been 5, not 10. Come on now. Uh but this is my fifth. I started with Fedora, moved to Ubuntu, Ubuntu to Arch, Vanilla Arch, and then Arch to OpenSUSE, and now I'm finally coming back to uh an arch based distribution and i picked manjaro mainly because it is the most popular it's the most requested that i see down and i'm also very familiar with arch since i've already gone through vanilla arch so uh i needed something to jam out some videos because as you see i'm really kind of strapped for time here i'm trying to get all these videos out and i knew with arch i could really settle into an already existing workflow i established while i was on that distribution so the controversy between Manjaro or an Arch-based distribution or, or just vanilla Arch. Well, Manjaro actually runs behind Arch, so my thought process was it should be more stable, and some people in the community love Manjaro. So I was like, okay, there's some, a lot of good there, but then there's also uh, quite a few people that have actually said that they've had problems with Manjaro and using Manjaro, especially over a long period of time. Well, this is a 10 day challenge, but I plan on sticking along with this for past 10 days, at least probably a month because my next distribution will have to be uh, probably vanilla Debian. And for it to really take off and do that, I really want to let some of the kernels dribble down into the Debian and become more commonplace because I'm on a Vega 64 graphics card that utilizes the 4.19 and above kernels. That's why I am kind of wanted an Arch-based install for this, just to see some of those kernels go more into that realm and then I can have kind of pick it a little later here in a month or so. But for now, we're going to stick with Manjaro, not for 10 days, but probably for longer. The first four parts of this will be in 10 days, and if I have any issues over the course of an entire month, I may make a part five, and that's probably going to be another like disaster-type scenario where I end up ditching it. But for today, just know, expect to see four parts, and you may see a fifth if we have a blow-up. With all that said, let's jump into it and actually start talking about how the install go, what do I think about it, and what was my experiences. So, the experience was very good, but I need to tell you what I did before I did the install. Before just picking the stock Manjaro with like the Bungie desktop or even doing a KDE variant or anything like that, I thought, let's make this a little more challenging and do the architect edition of Manjaro. And how did it compare to Vanilla Arch? Well, it was like arched with beautiful training wheels because they just, you launch into a setup installer and it numbers everything you need to do, one through about five or six. And it just steps you through the process. It was just wonderful i thought it was great very intuitive and uh straightforward i didn't need to read anything online prior to doing this and uh knew exactly what to do uh however i am very well versed with you know lvm partitioning all these other things so i thought as i'm doing this i'm documenting and for my Patreon supporters, I will be making a digital PDF for you guys to actually go in and download. And that is going from an absolute beginner level to where you can pick this up and install and do everything and onward uh, to where it breaks down every single option, every single menu item and what it does and how you can utilize it. But the actual install, oh, just perfect. I mean, absolutely, well, 
Not 100% perfect. I got to the desktop. I installed everything. All the codecs came pre-installed. Hell, it even had Steam pre-installed. So I was almost gaming immediately if I wanted to jump into a game. That's pretty sweet, especially since I had my home already, boom, on another drive, dropped that in there, and my Steam library just showed up with all my games. But there was one thing that I messed up on. And luckily, it's not a big thing, but my time zone was totally borked. I had it set to like Berlin, Germany. So that was kind of a bummer because if you noticed, my video from yesterday came out about six hours early. And that was mainly because of my time zone getting all messed up in there. I have since remedied that. Uh, just know that when you set these up, Pay close attention to the time zone options. I was kind of flipping through and I think I set it to like an RTC uh, version and didn't use an NTP server from online with the correct time zone associated with it. So uh, that was kind of a bummer, but overall, that was it. The time zone was literally the only problem I had. I installed all my packages and I do use some weird programs like Dropbox and um, I went ahead and installed Caden Live, OBS. Uh, obviously, everything I've recorded on this video is done in Manjaro. Everything installed seamlessly, quickly. I was up and going within about 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, the ranking of servers and the actual downloads of the packages is great. I was reading the article, big shout out, and I'll put his comment up here as well, um, to this guy. He actually showed me how to increase the number of threads you use when you do packages from the AUR. That's pretty huge because if you don't do that, it'll only use one thread. Well, I have a pretty powerful computer here and I up that to eight threads from one. So everything builds about eight times faster pretty darn awesome if you have a good cpu something with uh four four cores or more definitely make this tweak uh to your config file because wow just completely amazing uh so that was the only modification i did from stock uh, and that had a big performance boost from that uh the rest of it as far as any bugs i've noticed one uh, issue I've had, and I think this is more of a KDE issue, not so much a Manjara issue, is uh, my monitors keep resetting. I have a weird monitor setup. If you see me with my neck like this on streams and stuff, it's because I have a monitor way up here, and then I have this giant ultra wide right here. So that's where that one is, and this other one's way up here. Kind of a weird setup, but I like it because I'm not at this computer that much. And I really enjoy uh, just this overall configuration. It makes uh, just my workflow way easier and I can usually do a video like this in you know, about a minute, usually about an hour or so. But those were my initial impressions of Manjaro. Pretty awesome. That's, that's it. I mean, I probably already said that a couple times, but I just can't say how good the experience was. And honestly, if you look probably back to my other day ones, I was just as energetic about those distributions. So may take this with a grain of salt and don't just run out and do it right away. You might hold off and see how I'm faring here in a couple days. But overall, I'm really happy to be back on an Arch-based system because Building stuff is so darn simple. Oh, I was always just fighting OpenSUSE when it came to building obscure packages. And with this one, it's, it's just click it and hit install for the most part uh, with almost no issues. Um, Debian, uh, Debian-based systems, also very much the same way in my experience. Just click install and go. So, you know, both of those, I really enjoy the Arch-based distros and the Debian-based distros. So I can't really uh, say that enough out of these challenges. You know, this being my fifth challenge, that's one thing I have definitely learned what I really, really like. But be looking out for this. My next video is going to hopefully be the actual installation process where I'm going to walk you through an actual install of the Architect Edition and go through each one of the options. And then, you know, obviously, again, I said on Patreon, I'll have that PDF for you to download as well. Um, 
But uh, let me know what your guys' thoughts. I love reading the comments. Keep those coming. Uh, that is just a huge help to me because I can't tell you how many nuggets of just greatness that have come from those comments where I'm able to pick things out and create the best experience in Linux. I think if I tried Linux without doing YouTube, I don't think I'd have uh, one fourth of the joy I have today just because of those comments. So a big thank you to just all those people that have commented and said, hey, you should do this or try this package because that has made all the difference for me because many of these things I would have never found. But that's it for today, guys. Uh, again, thank you for the comments and you know, stay tuned. I'm really looking forward to this challenge so far. Manjaro is awesome and by far the best out of all of them, or it could just be me getting a little bit better at this in each install of a distribution so i i don't know either or i guess we're gonna have to stay tuned to part two and, and just check out to see what happens with this in distribution but uh so far i'm just kind of over the moon just really happy a little tired right now so i know this isn't quite as enthusiastic as i like to be but uh you know on that note i'll see you in the next video